Dan als ik trek, als ik klomp spoelen, zwart baar. Maar dat we goed als het zelf als een vaatse vers is, dat, want dat was nog nooit die geweest. En daar heb ik nou voor het minder gehad. This is Jem. He's a scientist. This is Otto. He's also a scientist. But they both like to make films, mostly about me. I'm a sandfish, and my name is Onabek. Onabek Fuss. I live in the Cedarburg, South Africa, the world. I've had a few problems along the way. Like all my rivers drying up. An alien fish! And now only have a few friends left. But there's this really cool project that involves... Science! Film! Water! The power powers combined. This is Saving Sandfish! On a bit first. In this episode of Saving Sunday, we embark on an epic adventure down the mighty Durang River, former stronghold for the iconic Onabek Fuss. This next 10 days is going to be interesting to see what's happened to the fish community in the Durang. The water quality is still good, habitat's still pretty good. I'd call it almost a wild and scenic river. And the fish community, you've got three large supplements there. Dan William Yellowfish, Dan William Sulfan, and Dan William Sandfish. But yeah, it's just going to be great to be with the last, last bunch of people on the river. Twenty years ago we were using gill nets, which was not a good idea, but that's the only fishing technology we had available to us at the time. And here we are twenty years later and I never imagined that I would still be working on the Durang. So the fight net that we use to catch the sandfish, it's got wings 22 meters long, two and a half meters deep. And the idea is that we drop it in the water with the float line holding up the wings, lead line on the bottom. Um, and the fish are corralled into the trap area or the cod end. There's three chambers and they generally end up in the, in the last chamber and they're happy to swim around here without too much stress. Nothing indigenous. No. Oh, there's a mouse. Usually yeah. yeah. the large mouth, the mouth is going back behind the eye. And the diamond pattern there. 175. That's it for the morning. Not a single indigenous species. Yeah. Tankwa now, over Katbakis Pass, down Skitterai Kloof, and we're going to stop at the Tankwa Patstow to check.
check out the UFO that landed the... <laughs> <laughs> There's an energy that you can't find anywhere in the world. But it's here. There's something special here. The, the, the wind, the... It's something you can't find anywhere. It's really like that. We're going holiday at Artenbos, three days. It's too, it's too green, it's, too, it's not right. Yeah, it's the best place. This is where I want to stay. So we just arrived at De Mont. Essentially, this is the heart of Sandfish territory, or was once. When we sampled this in 2000, there were big schools of sandfish, but in subsequent visits, the numbers have declined. We're certainly hoping to get at least one or two, possibly three species of indigenous fish in the fuck. Well, I think it's the biggest sandfish I've ever seen. Yeah, what do you mean? Uh, three, three sandfish. Wow! Absolutely. That sandfish is at least a territory. Unbelievable. We were fortunate enough on day two to have caught uh, three rather large sandfish, so uh, we're very pleased about that. This evening we want to get to Irlands Flay, which is about 30 kilometers north of us. But there's been a road washout recently and if we can't get through, we're going to have to sample much further south at a place called Brackfontein. It's the one and only dam on the Durang. We were sampling at the Brackfontein Weir and we had a really cool net, lots of large sandfish many of them like over 50 centimeters which is really cool no. but other than the sandfish unfortunately it's mostly non-native fish that we're finding system dominated by bluegill and tons of bass i think whilst it's been really incredible to see these extremely large sandfish it's also been somewhat worrying that we haven't gotten any other size classes of native fish Come to the Bos Wolf confluence of the Durang, um, and we didn't have the campsite we thought we did. So now we're camping here, <laughs> which is basically a like a dry riverbed. And Bruce and Mo have got the kitchen going in the rain. Best of the Best option in wet weather like this. And I, as chief fire warden, am keeping the fire dry so we can have a braai. I'd say, arguably, that I have the most important job. Rian and Dean are out setting the net now. Look at these two lekker gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> Time for a drink. You need one there. There you go. That's it. In 2001, at this site, Bruce caught 160 sandfish. 19 yellowfish, which is amazing. 
um, but that was 20 years ago, so we're gonna see what we find today. Yo! Lots of sandfish, it means we're happy. Oh, but they're in nice condition, these fish. Beautiful, man. beautiful. Awesome, pussy. Whoa, yo! Last day. Five, five, zero. What is worrying about the net no is I you. haven't seen no, no, no. any Clan William yellowfish or any Clan William sawfish. Yeah, and historically they were here in very large numbers. Not the best of times on the Duran with the rain just hammering down on a Karoo which probably hasn't seen rain like this for the last 10 years. If the during does come down, we're in a bit of a sticky situation because we need to cross over to get to our next site. So we're out in the tank where we've got two cars stuck in the mud. We're building a road to tow Dean's Bucky through a little river. But in the back there, yeah, Martin's also in some mud. So. Try and stay in the middle of the road and don't count the steer. Sorry, guys! Ah, like, <laughs> 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 Sorry, what's <I> wearing? <laughs> I'm a bit concerned uh, about the depth of the water at this causeway crossing. My wife will not be happy with me if my car gets flooded. It's a bit like the crossing we did this morning. Yes, yes. Yeah. This is deeper and yes, and freakier for that reason. Yeah. Cause can go like Bruce. Yeah. Yeah. Everything is wet and cold, but I've had better days in the Bido Valley. I'm not gonna lie about that. Oh my god, here comes more rain. Big fish of everything here. Big bluegill, big bass. We've got banded tilapia, bluegill, sunfish, common carp, largemouth bass, smallmouth bass, and spotted bass. At the same time, we only have one species of indigenous fish, uh, and that's pandorum sandfish. What's concerning is the lack of small size classes showing up in our nets. Over 70, 80 percent of the fish caught are these large, big adult fish. You should get a whole spectrum of size classes: juveniles, sub-adults, adults, and then very large adults. Yeah. And what we're getting primarily are adults and old fish. The bluegill eat the smallest juveniles. Any fish surviving in the bluegill hordes will then encounter bass. Okay, so this bass has got a very full stomach, the spotted bass. Let's see what's inside it. Bluegill, another bluegill. Absolutely unbelievable. Thanks.
After another solid day of setting fikes, the team reflects on the previous spawning migration and wonders how exactly sandfish managed to find their way back to the Bido Valley. I think the question is like, is their return to the Bido something that comes from a, a, yeah, a learned, oh my god, this river smells great, this is why I occur here, I need to go back to this thing, and then they trace this little hint of a smell that yeah. comes down the river. But the view of a sandfish doing that, which is almost like a cultural phenomenon. Yeah. Not a genetic phenomenon, it's mm. a... Learned from the elders. It's a learned... Yeah. yeah, the opposing like hypothesis salmon. could be... Is there yes. something in their... Is there something that's genetically driven that makes them chase the smell? Like, to why do some people like coriander and others don't? It's like being in North America here at the moment. <laughs> Getting bluegill sunfish and two bass species. The biggest bass you get here, how big can they be? Um, the small mouth, that's pretty big. We know uh, Dr. Leonard Fleming, he's an excellent fly fisherman. He has shown that there are still some Cain William sawfins. But there should be hundreds of big fish in a pool this size. Very sad to see excellent habitat, beautiful water quality, almost no native fish are gone. I've been coming here since 1991 with the river rock and in about 1998 then I started the lodge here. I've been here for 30 years. The alien fish have been here consistently while we haven't seen any or very very seldom see any evidence of sandfish which we saw all the time. We don't see that anymore, no marks on the rocks. We set a net yesterday evening along this deep rocky ledge, kind of a cliff run, so a different habitat to where we've been sampling in the past and I hope that we find some yellowfish. So we're going to head out, bring in the net and then we've got a long day ahead of us. We uh, got just bass and bluegill, so that takes us to four sites where we've only found non-native fish. Our next site is at Braincrans, so we're hoping once we get there to have a few more native fish, especially sawfin and yellowfish, which we haven't got so far. Mozambique tilapia. For real? Right here. Okay. Oh, there's two. No photographs of my belly, Jeremy, please. Quite nice and surprising. We've got a couple of sandfish, maybe three of them. And then, unfortunately, after that, it's all non native species. So I think they are bass. There are a couple of bluegill, maybe. And then we've just found out that there's Mozambican tilapia in there. The last few days have been a little bit depressing after that, just because we've caught only alien fish, bass, bluegill, the odd tilapia. The sandfish that we did find were pretty big old fish, which backs our hypothesis that there's not much recruitment happening in the system. So it's a pretty sad state of affairs. It's not hopeless, it's sad, but it's not hopeless. I think coming into the trip, I wasn't expecting to see as many sandfish as we did. And I wasn't expecting to see them in the sizes that we did. And so those first five days were quite magical. I saw the line tremble, and then the line just took off. When I struck, a 
<laughs> I've never oh. experienced the power of it. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Oh, I can't operate the boat. Bruce got to the boat and fortunately the fish was tired and we could slowly bring the boat and the fish back to shore. The Rian had a landing net and when he got the fish's head into the net I realised the fish is secure. It was just a freshwater fish catch of a lifetime. Massive, massive. There we go, there we go. You got him? Don't let him go, okay? Got him. <laughs> Yes, today. I'm nearly 60 and I will not catch a bigger Clan William than that in my life. I'm... It's the king of the Durham, definitely. To see that yellow fish and realize that that's what's been lost because of the introduction of bass and then bluegill, it's, it's heartbreaking. On the next episode of Saving Sandfish, we head back to the Bido Valley to follow up on an ambitious plan to increase the survival of young sandfish. Ornithus. <laughs> 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 And he's brandy. He's going to be in and he's texting 10 year old Texan steaks. Yeah. <laughs>